Hello and welcome to my lesson. My name is Mr. Johnson. This is my 20 minute lesson for satchel recordings. And this is uh, background radiation, which is GCSE physics part of the radioactivity unit. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. Okay. Okay, so what we've got to be able to do by the end of this is define background radiation. And then we're going to describe some of the sources of background radiation and finally explain how to measure radioactivity and the need for corrected count rate. Let's start off then. We are constantly being exposed to ionizing radiation at a low level from space and from naturally radioactive substances in the environment. This is called background radiation common question that gets asked in the GCSC papers, write a definition of the term background radiation. And at this point, we're using the information that's present in the text above, but a possible answer is just the ionizing radiation that is around us all the time from a number of sources. You could even go so far as to say a number of natural and a number of man-made sources, but this is pretty much the answer that they're looking for. That is the definition of background radiation. Sweet and simple to start with. So next bit, describe the sources of background radiation then. You can see from the pie chart here that there are a number of different sources and in the exams, they do like to ask you questions using graphs or charts to see what you can elicit from them and how you can use those in your answer. The chart below shows the sources of background radiation averaged over the entirety of the UK. The main source, 49%, is from radon gas. Radon is a radioactive gas that's produced by rocks that contain a small amount of uranium. Now water passes through these rocks and into our drinking water supply, meaning that the water absorbs small amounts of radioactive materials from the rocks as they do. This means that our drinking water can also contribute to natural background radiation levels. We also use rocks hewn from quarries and from the ground to build structures such as buildings, monuments, even statues. The rock used to make these buildings can also contribute to natural background radiation levels. Some food radiation you're exposed to. And this includes through the soil, through the water, and also some of the animals that eat the plants. High energy earth from space. These are called to start by the upper atmosphere, but some do reach Earth's surface, and these add to the natural background radiation. The picture that you see there is the aurora borealis or the northern lights and they are a display that's put on when charged particles from the solar winds of the sun strike earth's atmosphere causing a emission of light at particular wavelengths and frequencies finally we can talk about the production of radioactive sources for medical treatments and the exposure to ionizing radiation such as x-rays and gamma rays for medical scanning and cancer treatments each of these techniques, while only used when needed to prolong life and defeat disease, artificially increase a person's exposure to background radiation. One other thing that has not been mentioned here, but is a man-made source, is the background radiation from waste materials from uh, nuclear power stations, and also the fallout from nuclear accidents and nuclear testing, such as the Chernobyl and Fukushima disasters, and from the Bikini Atoll tests when the first atomic bomb was tested. Quick question here, match the type to the source. So they give you a type of background radiation and a source, and this is usually something that's worth one, maybe two marks in a paper. But cosmic rays, as we've already mentioned, they're from the sun and other stars. Radon gas, the most common one across, averaged across the UK, is present from uranium rocks in the ground. 
Medical sources, well, that comes from radiotherapy treatment and x-rays. And then food, plants, animals, they come because of the absorption of radio sorry, radioactive isotopes within the environment. So the chart below shows the sources of the background radiation averaged over the UK. The main source, so 49%, is from radon gas. We said that already. And radon's already a radioactive gas, we mentioned this, produced by rocks that contain small amount of uranium. Radon diffuses into the air from rocks and the soil. It can build up in houses, especially when there's poor ventilation. For example, if a particular home has been built without ventilation bricks, or if during the course of the lifetime of the owners having that home, they've covered up bricks that were meant to provide adequate ventilation. This can actually be dangerous to health, and it needs to be monitored in areas of the country where it's known there are larger amounts of uranium in rocks, leading to greater production of radon gas in the soil. Because the amount of uranium in rocks varies around the country, so does the amount of radon in the air in different places within the UK. Basically, geologically, the structure of the UK is not the same rock from top to bottom. So depending on where you live, the rocks present in the ground underneath you can make a big difference to the amount of radon that's being diffused into the atmosphere from rocks underneath you. So why is it important to be able to measure the radioactivity of something? Because the amount of uranium in rocks varies around the country, so does the amount of radon in the air. This means that the percentage contribution of sources of background radiation can be different at different places in the same country. I have seen questions like this pop up for six marks, where they give you the average for the UK and then the average for two different places in the UK and ask you to compare and contrast. On the left, we have the average sources of background radiation in Staffordshire. On the right, the average sources of background radiation in Cornwall. If we take a look and compare them, food and drink is about 12 to 13% of background radiation for Staffordshire, where it's only 3.2 for Cornwall. Buildings and soil. In Staffordshire, the sources of radiation there, again, close to say 18%, whereas in Cornwall, about 6.3. Cosmic rays from space, about 15% in Staffordshire, about 3.8 of the total in Cornwall. Radon gas. Now, even though both are high here, 44, 43% there in Staffordshire with 82.5% of the total in Cornwall. That's a big jump. And that's because of the differences in the rocks underneath the two places. Cornwall obviously having more uranium containing rocks, which are decaying and releasing radon gas than Staffordshire. Finally, medical. In Staffordshire, we're talking about dead on 15%, where in Cornwall, 4.2%. And again, this could be explained by differences in the number of hospitals or the number of treatment centers for patients with cancer or the number of uh, diagnostic centers that use radioactive traces for diagnosis of disease, with more of them being present in Staffordshire and less in Cornwall. So these can be explained by different um, things about that particular area based on what you know and how it works. As well as that, though, different jobs can also expose us to more background radiation from different sources. Air cabin crews spend a lot of time flying higher up in the atmosphere. And because they're flying higher up in the atmosphere, the protective effect of the atmosphere is less for them. So they're exposed to more cosmic radiation than someone over the, on the ground over their lifetime of work. Quarry workers spend time close to rocks like granite, which are sources of background radiation meaning over the lifetime of a quarry worker, they will also be exposed to higher than normal levels of background from the rocks that they're working with. Dentists, x-ray technicians, radiographers, anyone that spends a lot of time working with x-ray photographs or scans for patients, they're also increasing their background exposure because they're working with radioactive sources at the time. So this means they're exposed to greater amounts of man-made background radiation over their working lifetime. So that described the sources of background radiation. Next bit, explain how to measure radioactivity. Radioactivity can be detected using photographic film. And in fact, when we spoke earlier and we asked the question, why is it important to measure? 
those people in those professions need to know how much exposure to radiation they've had so that they know if they're working within safe levels. We use film to help work this out. Photographic film, you may or may not have seen it, depending on your age now, but it used to be the basis of cameras before we got the digital cameras. And photographic film, when exposed to light, darkens. As more and more radiation reaches the film, it gets darker and darker. This means then that we've got one way of working out the amount of radiation present at a person. Because if they're wearing a badge that contains film and it's exposed to radioactive uh, materials, then the radiation will cut the energy released by the radiation will cause the film to darken. And we can grade the amount of uh, change in darkness of the film to work out how much radiation it's exposed to. The problem with this, though, is that the film has to be developed or made into a picture in order to measure the amount of radiation it was exposed to, which is called the dose. On the side there, we've got the idea of film and reel in a developer tank with a developer solution, and this fixes the image permanently. So people who work in places with radiation often wear a film containing badge called a dosimeter that checks how much exposure they've had to radiation in a day so that they know if they're working within safe levels or not. And it looks like this. Newer dosimeters have been developed, though, that can change colour without needing to be developed chemically. This allows for a faster reading of whether someone has been exposed to a high level of background radiation. And there are also now digital dosimeters that can measure it with a digital readout and let people know instantaneously if they've been exposed to too much background, which then allows them to go and seek medical advice or treatment. The radioactivity of a source can also be measured using a Geiger Muller tube. Now, this is different. This isn't measuring the radioactivity in terms of how much something's been exposed to. It's measuring how much is being given off by a source that you might be considering using for something. Radiation passing through the Geiger Muller tube ionizes a gas inside it, and this allows a short pulse of current to flow along it, much like what happens inside a smoke alarm with a mercurium 241. When we Use the GM tube, it looks like this. There's our GM tube and counter. A Geiger Muller tube can be connected to a counter. This counts the pulses of current, or the Geiger Muller tube may give a click each time radiation is detected. You often see this in computer games or in films where someone's looking for a nuclear arm or a nuclear warhead, and as they're moving around with the detector, it starts clicking. The closer they get, the faster the clicks. The count rate is the number of clicks per second or minute and the more radioactive um, counts there are the faster the count rate the more radioactivity you are measuring so here's an example question tom records background counts of 15 22 and 17 counts per minute he then records a count rate of 186 counts per minute from a sample of granite what is the corrected count rate for the sample's activity now, this is important. Corrected count is something, again, that goes beyond just counting out. But we've got three counts or three counts per minute recorded by Tom. This is just the background. Then we've got a count rate of 186 counts per minute from the sample. So the first thing we have to do is work out what is our actual background and how does that affect our count from the sample? The background's pleasant, present at all times. If it's present at all times, then it makes sense to realise that the count rate for the sample also includes our background count rate. So to find the true or corrected count rate just from the sample, we have to take away the background from the sample rate. That would then mean that from that 186 counts, we would take away the background count to get the corrected count. But the problem here within the question is that they've given us three background counts. So which one do we choose? Do we choose 15, 22 or 17? Well, in all honesty, in science, when we've got a range of numbers that are measuring one thing, we use the mean. So here we would find the mean count rate. When they measure the radioactivity of the source, scientists have to measure the background radiation first by taking several readings and finding the mean. The mean value is then subtracted from those measurements. So for Tom, 
we would have a mean value for background count, which is 15 plus 22 plus 17 divided by three to give us 18 counts per minute. Then we would find the corrected count rate, which is 186 minus 18, which tells us that the sample has a radioactive count rate of 168 counts per minute. And that is explain how to measure radioactivity. Last type of question that often comes up and most people tend to get stuck or wrong with this one. Following question was found on a blog, natural radiation won't hurt you, but human made radiation will comment on this statement. Now, most people tend to jump straight to the idea that human made radiation is things like atomic bombs, nuclear disasters, and it'll happen and it'll hurt you. So human made radiation in this case is supported as the worst case scenario. But actually, in this kind of question, the first thing that we do is indicate naturally occurring sources radiation. So radiation from radon gas, food, um, from rocks in the soil, from buildings. And then the fact that human-made radiation sources, nuclear power stations, nuclear waste, medical sources, they're less common. Most of the background radiation comes from natural sources because it's around us all the time. So it's actually more likely that natural radiation will hurt you, but human-made radiation won't unless there is a major disaster, such as a power station explosion or a fallout from an atomic bomb. That's the end of the lesson today. So I want to say thank you again for watching and I hope you found this useful. Take care and see you next time.